I quit drinking alcohol and then smoking a cigarette and weed and all the other stuff. Now you're thinking, this guy must be boring. And I completely agree with you. Except that I'm happier than ever. And I would say I'm a pretty fun person to be hang out with. And that is why you should be good at quitting too. As I've been working as a fashion model for six, seven years and then travel around the world and different cities and I partied with the beautiful girls and all the alcohol, drugs and cigarette and pretty much whatever you can imagine. For a young mom's boy from Japan, it was a mind-blowing experience and everything was so different and new and it was so beautiful. I was drowned to that energy, I was drowned to that lifestyle. And there was a countless of rejection. Every place I go, every city I go, there's always so many rejections. But at the same time, the validation that I was receiving kept feeding my ego until I became the ego. All I was doing was chasing girls, chasing pleasures and getting shit-faced and getting fucked up. And then waking up the next morning hungover and then telling myself that was a good experience, another story to tell. Such a dumb kid. But the truth is I wanted to be validated. I wanted to fit in, in this cool lifestyle. I wanted my presence to mean something to this world or people around me. But this doesn't last long because it is just a temporary distraction to avoid, to get away from things that I didn't want to face. This is one of the most famous samurai in the history, Musashi Miyamoto. And he said, there is nothing outside of yourself that can enable you to get better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. Everything is within. Everything exists. Seek nothing outside of yourself. But we are constantly looking for something outside of ourselves, whether it is happiness, love, and that is exactly why people are unhappy. And welcome back to my channel. My name is Sho, and in this video, I'm going to share why I quit all the fun stuff and it actually became happy and fulfilled and how you can apply this philosophy and the reason behind of this art of quitting so that you can be happier and fulfilled as well. If that sounds like something that you would enjoy or you would like to hear, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. All right, let's dive in. So why did I even decide to quit all the fun stuff? We were absolutely sober and then have blast time, an amazing time when we were kids, weren't we? Where did that spirit go? When I realized that, there was a question arised within me which goes, am I relying on these external factors to be happy and if so then i need to change i am happy if i have this i am confident if i'm a little bit tipsy when i take that if i might still feel the same way or am i still the same person can i feel the happiness within me without all these things and the validation and whatever that i have externally am i confident enough to talk to girls am i confident enough to to be who i am without all these alcohol and drugs or like whatever. And deep down, I'm sure 100% every single person have that. Oh yeah, like I should quit smoking. Oh yeah, I should quit drinking. Oh yeah, I should quit eating sugar or like eating junk food. But they're never manifested into the physical action. At the beginning of my quitting journey, I quit weed when I actually moved to Amsterdam. I know this is exactly what you wouldn't do if you moved to Amsterdam. Then I quit eating meat six months or so after I moved to Amsterdam. So right now I'm vegan, but first I became vegetarian. So the next day I went to a store that I was working and you know, I was hanging out with my colleague and then I was working and my colleague was like, yo, like let's grab a dinner together, all of us. And then we went to this amazing hamburger restaurant. The next day I quit eating meat. Now, I still remember when we sat on the table, we were like eight or 10 of us, right? And then like we were starting ordering and then I looked into the menu and there's a vegan option, a vegetarian option, and I saw this burger called quinoa burger. And I was like, what the fuck is a quinoa burger? It's like, it sounds like a cute girl's name. So of course I ordered it. And a friend of mine that sat next to me, he was actually 200 meter 10, so he's a massive guy, right? And then he was eating ribs, like a commercial, like Ugh. And then the other boys were eating like Wagyu burger and everything looks so good and smells so good. And I was eating this cute girl's name, quinoa burger with the French fry. And then when I start eating, sure, you know, it tastes good and all, but it's, it's not the beef, it's not the meat. So I was like, it's all right, you know, let's try to enjoy. And then after the meal, everyone is like, oh, I'm full. And this is exactly how I felt. I was happy and I was fulfilled. Do you know why? Because I had a great conversation with my boys. I had a great time. I had a great meal. And the way I felt was exactly the same as everybody else. Or exactly the same as I ate meat. But what was not the same was how the food affects your body. So whatever you eat, whether it is meat or junk food or toxic shit, or the vegan stuff, 
or the very healthy organic whatever you eat it is not about the veganism that i'm talking about it is the choice that we all have what do you want to eat today if you have a ten dollars twenty dollars what would you eat right now and if you choose the junk food if you choose the meat every single meal then that is the choice you have but what i felt was i feel exactly the same and it is positive and then it feels so good so it is just a notion of eating itself whether it is coming with the satisfaction of the the sense of the taste or the stimulation that you have when you eat meat high calorie foods produce a lot of dopamine so when you reach to that shift of perspective whatever you want to quit whatever you want to change it will just happen effortlessly so what you need to change is not just like oh i need to go to the gym i need to stop eating this or xyz you need to think what is the notion that you have about eating itself the things that you want to quit or things that you want to change it is essentially the change of the notion of the action that you're taking so one by one i took my scale and it became lighter and then i realized that i was covered by so much bullshit and i definitely felt great lighter and then it actually gave me so much clarity and self-awareness now that i know in hindsight that i just wanted to be fit in and i wanted to be a part of the gang you know i wanted to be a part of this cool lifestyle by by consuming the alcohol and smoking cigarette even though from the beginning i didn't like smoking cigarette from the beginning my my body didn't want to take the alcohol I still remember the first day I took an alcohol, it was 20. I kept promise myself that I'm not gonna drink until 20 because I thought it's it's so lame. People are drinking while they want to win the game in a basketball club or football club. And I was like really serious about playing basketball. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna drink because it's so stupid. So I kept my promises until 20. I didn't drink until I became 20. And then when I became 20, I had 15 shots of tequila. That was my first time I had an alcohol. and. I did know all the things that I consumed before. My body didn't like it, but I kept believing in this notion of this, what a life looks like, what the cool life looks like. Then I kept consuming the things that matches with that notion. But quitting is a part of the process of letting go. If you have so much fear and an attachment certain with a certain things or certain people, actions and habits, it's harder to let go. I quit alcohol actually the last day of Milan and I met this amazing guy in Milan and he was he was such a great guy and I really loved hanging out with him and he was way older than me but you know he showed me uh, the Milan and he introduced me to a lot of places so we sh- had a 10 shots in within a one hour and I had an amazing day but then afterwards I felt am I relying on alcohol to have fun it was way too much fun so I quit it in the next day because I had too much fun with alcohol and I wanted to have the same amount of fun without anything. So I quit drinking alcohol next day. I decided just spontaneously and I supposed to fly to Malta. And Malta is a place known as a party island. So I flew to the Malta next day and then I kept promising I didn't party at all. I was just walking, creating content and swimming in a beautiful ocean every day. And I had, I had a party, I had an amazing party every day in the ocean, just myself. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I was just swimming in the clear blue ocean and walking out every day and feeling good and sober. I've learned there's no tomorrow. We wake up every day today. The yesterday fades as you wake up and then tomorrow was just an idea. So every time, every day you wake up, it's all you have. So if you're procrastinating, postponing things because it feels uncomfortable, because it's not the right timing, that means you're dying every single day without living. Because we die every day. This is one of the stoic philosophy Memen Mori teaches us. We should feel the death as close it can be. The more you avoid the idea of death, the more you fear the death, you take things for granted, which is the exact moment what we have. If you know that you die tomorrow, we would do things differently. We would live today differently if we know that there is not going to be tomorrow. Feel the death as close as it can be, like it's next to us. Then the attitude towards the life will be different. Because most of you guys, including me, are healthy and don't have any, you know, near this experience that waiting for you tomorrow. So it's hard for us to actually feel that everyday basis. But this is exactly what we need to remind ourselves like, hey, like today, 
this is all we have so that we actually understand what is a living and so we actually understand and appreciate things that we have before it turns into what we had. So since I started all this quitting journey, it became some sort of like challenge and then I actually love quitting things. As a result, what I found out was addition is the gateway to addiction and a subtraction is the gateway to satisfaction. To me, living simple is really the key to live a happier life because you, the less bullshit you deal with, the less stress you feel. The more you consume bullshit out there, ideas and unnecessary shit, the more stress you become. So as it can be as simple as just having less things or having less bullshit in your life, having less time to, to mindlessly consume the social media. It is such a simple equation, but our ego whispers into our ears and like, hey, you should have Louis Vuitton, you should have a nice car and then you should a, uh, uh, have more sex and you should drink and get fucked up and get all this validation that you can have. It is your ego literally telling you to put your nose into the bullshit. This is quite a graphic, isn't it? You putting your nose into the literally the bullshit. I actually heard such a great story from Sada Guru the other day uh, from his YouTube channel, and which goes like this. There was a pheasant and a cow, and they were helping each other, you know, as the, as the animal kingdom. And the pheasant was offering that picking up the hairs and making sure that the cows are clean and the cows are giving pheasant a place to stay which is his back so they're friends so one day the pheasant goes like you know i'm too old to to fly away but i wish i could just like go up to the top of the tree and cow said oh cool you should definitely eat my shit and the pheasant goes like what that's that's disgusting and the cow said no like human loves it like actually works try it so the pheasant was like, okay, let me just try. And then he ate his shit. And then actually he flew to the fast branch. And then he actually eventually he flew to the top of the tree. And then he experienced this like youth and this freedom. And then he was so happy. And he was like, yo, thank you, man. And I feel so good. It's amazing to get up here once again. So pheasant sit on the top of the tree and then enjoy the view. And then the human saw the pheasant on the top of the tree. So he shot with a gun. The moral of the story is that the bullshit might be able to get you what you want, but it's not going to allow you to stay there. But that's what your ego does. You know, it's going to swallow you. The, the, if you keep feeding your ego, it's going to swallow you and then you, you're going to feel that massive hole within you. And then once you lose your control, that all the things that you do say is your ego. So who are you now? We are already introduced to these ideas and the way of living in this modern society. So it is absolutely your choice to learn things that brings you happiness and fulfillment internally and then unlearn things that just feeds your ego. So I have a question for you. What are you going to quit from today? And then why do you want to quit? Let me know in the comment and let this be your goal in this month or in this year and tell me why. And this is a commitment for you, this quitting journey. With us there, thank you for watching. If you want to watch more content like this about self-love and self-growth, make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Live your life like a movie.